Hey, you YouTube and Snapchat and fuckers. Welcome back to another installment of the Friday Wrap-Up. Wow, we made it through one more week of hell and another another day closer to 2021. <laughs> so sorry that we're posting, I'm posting the wrap-up up a little late today. Uh, it's been a fucking crazy week, man. I've been busy. So uh, <clears throat> before we get started, I'd like to, uh, again, tip my hat to uh, the good people at Libra Tequila. Uh, today's libation is the actually the national drink of Mexico. Now, this is fun. Most people think that the national drink of Mexico is uh, a margarita. It's not. It's called a Paloma. And I wish I would have discovered this a few months ago. This is delightfully refreshing. First, I'm going to take a little sip and wet my whistle. Now, I'm going to tell you what's in it. So I figured, you know, since summer's coming to an end, this is actually the official last week of uh, last week in the summer. We should do something a little bright, little summery, little refreshing, but you know, maybe with some fall flair to it. So, like I said, this was the perfect cocktail. So, uh, a Paloma is a shot and a half of your favorite tequila. Once again, you always want to use a good blanco tequila when you're mixing a cocktail, and you want it to be 100% agave, not some rot gut shit. Uh, half ounce of lime juice, and then you fill it up with grapefruit soda like Fresca. Or if you could find Joritos, which is a, a, a Latin uh, grapefruit soda. Which if you can find the one from Mexico, even better. Because it's got pure cane sugar in it. <clears throat> you just give it a quick roll. And then I garnish it with a little, uh, as you can see here, a little, little, little grapefruit twist there. So it gives it that little orangey fall color. And it's a very refreshing cocktail. Enough of these and you'll be singing the Mexican National Anthem. Azalud, the drink up would be somebody. Ooh, that's good. So before we jump, I'm actually very excited about today's t-shirt. I mean, I don't know if you guys can see that. I mean, how cool is that, right? Okay, I got to thank the good people at Amazon for this shit. I can't wait to walk around and wear this thing and wait and pray for somebody to say something stupid to me. So, Corona update this week. Governor Nostrils says that he won't ban trick-or-treating in New York yet. Um, but he will allow it as long as no one smiles or enjoys it. So, so far, get your Halloween costumes ready. Uh, just don't, don't, don't enjoy it at all, and, and we should be okay. The corona won't spread if you don't smile, you know. Uh, <clears throat> schools are still adamant that they will not allow sports until 2021, even despite the student out outcry. Students are protesting. They're, you know, they're making little signs and standing in front of the school after school. That's nice. Listen, I, I feel bad for these kids. I said it before. I really do. But you know what? I sort of get it. Okay, you know, I mean, if you, if you, if, even if you have, you know, even with the some, you know, limited contact sports, you're still gonna have to do extra sterilization of the locker rooms and 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 the equipment and stuff like that. And that costs money that these schools don't have a lot of right now, um, <clears throat> because you could thank your local lawmakers and legislators for fucking the budgets up. So I sort of understand that. Uh, PAL leagues are still running though, so you know. Kids could, could 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 do that. Now, I get it. In high school, this can fuck up a scholarship, you know, if you're looking for an athletic scholarship. So, hopefully, the colleges, um, you know, do something to, you know, compensate for that. So, we'll see what happens. But uh, I, I, I get it. I'm not I'm not 100% against it. I, I mean, I feel for them, you know, I think back to my days in high school, it would have pissed me off, too. So, um, you know, I got to play devil's advocate with that. Um you know, every day I turn on the fucking news and every day I hear of a new school closing because of, you know, either a student gets the, the coronavirus or you hear a teacher gets the virus. They got to shut the fucking school down, quarantine everybody for 14 days. And, and, and school's only been in session, what, like a week, two weeks? Uh, you know, with the flu season approaching, corona always gets misdiagnosed as the flu, at least it was. Um... I, I hate to tell you guys, but uh, it's just a matter of time before there's another fucking total shutdown like we had last spring, okay? So, you know, buckle up, kids. It's going to get rough. I mean, it's more fun to have a pandemic when it's when the weather's nice because at least you can get out and do shit. But if it starts fucking snowing and it's cold and it's brutal, man, it's going to be a shit show. So I'm just telling you now, stock up, buckle up. It's, it's going to get bumpy. Uh, speaking of schools, our... Good friend, Mayor Muppet Hands. And, ooh, I got some fucking dirt on this guy today. So 
So Muppet Hands has decided, he announced uh, a couple days ago, that he's going to push back the opening of middle schools and high schools. As you know, he had pushed it back to September 22nd. Now he's going to push it back even further to uh, October, early to middle October. And here's why. All right, because one, this fucktard has no idea what he's doing. I told you his his plan to open the schools was fucking ludicrous to begin with. Um, the schools are uh, they're underfunded, and they haven't done a fucking thing in most of these schools to sterilize them, to put proper safety precautions in place, change out the filters, you sterilize you know sterilize the classrooms and all that other shit. So. Um, they're putting the teachers in jeopardy. They're putting the kids in jeopardy. Um, I don't even know how they're opening up the early learning centers, but apparently um, it's a shit show over there in the city, and he decided to push the, the opening back to October. So I can't say I'm fucking surprised by this at all. So, Okay, kids, get your tickets out. Oh, boy! Crazy train's leaving the station. All right, so here we go, kids. All right, get this shit. New York City Council has voted in favor of a bill that will allow New York City restaurants to add an additional 10% surcharge to all diners' bills at the end of the meal. Okay? This isn't the tip. So they're allowing cities, uh, they're allowing restaurants in the city to, to just add an arbitrary 10% fee of the overall bill to your check to offset all the damage that Corona has done to these restaurants. But are you fucking kidding me? We're in the middle of a recession. Other people have limited incomes. They've lost their jobs. They're all hurting. And now you want to allow... This is this is how the city rectified the fact that they wouldn't allow restaurants to open. Here, you could charge people more. Like, what fucking Momo thought this was a good idea? First of all, if any restaurant is stupid enough to do this, it's instant suicide. Okay, I can understand if they, you know, uptick the, the prices on their menu a little bit to kind of bring in a little more extra revenue. I get that, okay? So you bring up the prices of your menu a little bit. It's un it's not noticeable. But to add a 10% surcharge to the end of the bill, well, you catch your people off guard. So now you you know, you sit there, you think, okay, my meal's going to cost me X, Y, Z. Maybe these people have to budget themselves a little bit more. And now you're going to fucking pound them on top of the head with a 10% surcharge. You know who that's going to end up fucking? The wait staff. Because now it's going to cut into their tip. This is an absolute horrible idea. Whoever fucking thought of this thing should have their eyelids ripped off and then stuck in a room full of fluorescent lights. Okay? Son of a bitch. You fucking gotta be kidding me. So, speaking of stupid, that stimming retard of a mayor, Muppet Hands, he's come up with yet another brilliant plan to right New York City's ever-growing budget deficit. So, get this shit. In addition to major budget cuts to the NYPD and the Department of Sanitation, he's now proposing to pink slip 22,000 municipal employees in the city. Yeah, you heard me. He wants to fucking fire 22,000 municipal employees. Okay? What the fuck? I, I, I mean, does the city not have enough problems? People are losing their homes. They can't pay their rents. They've lost their jobs. They've lost their businesses. And now, all the, these employees, these municipal employees that, you know, thought they were safe, you know, that, that really don't make that much money, but yet they, they work for their pension and their benefits, he wants to fucking pink slip them in the middle of a pandemic. And they say, I'm crazy. Like, what the fuck? I mean, is this fucking guy on fucking drugs? Like, I mean, I don't understand. When did he come up with this idea? When he's rocking back and forth and tweedling his nipples and banging his fucking head against the wall. Like, I don't understand. What, 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 what fucking stupidity goes through this low-functioning retard's head? Okay, and, 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 and to kind of, I guess, you know, sugarcoat it a little bit, he said that in October he's going to furlough, which isn't laying off, it's just a temporary, you know, sidestep. He's going to furlough his entire office, including himself, for one week with no pay. Now, l let me just make you privy to something. This jerk-off makes almost $300,000 a year, so that he brings in roughly just under five grand a week. Okay, so he's going to say, oh, I'm going to take a week, no pay. Big fucking deal. What about everybody else that works in your office that doesn't make that much money? That have families and shit. That, you, you think that's gonna that's gonna fix the fucking budget problem? I mean, come on. Look, this 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 fucking plan was so asinine. 
I mean, really, it, it, it's so asinine that it actually triggered Governor Nostrils. It, it, he, he had to weigh in on this uh, the other day, okay? And he even got a little nasty. He called New York City dirty, which I'm not disagreeing with anything he says here. It pains me to say that. <clears throat> he called New York City dirty, stating that it has a garbage problem. It has a homeless problem. Um, it, it's got a, a, a tremendous crime problem. And, and that municipal layoffs are not the answer. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. I mean, and this from a jerk-off who created a $30 billion uh, budget deficit in the state. Okay? He, 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 he's weighing in and, 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 and criticizing. That's like a pile of shit telling another pile of shit, you stink. Okay? That's, that's the fucking world we live in. That's the state that we live in right now. Okay? I don't understand how these two motherfuckers have a job. I really don't. I mean, not for nothing. They impeached Trump for asking a fucking question. I, these two jerk-offs are running rampant throughout the goddamn state of New York and the city of New York and, and, and basically destroying it, okay? And, and nobody fucking does nothing. I, I don't understand. These are elected officials. You know they work for us. It's not the other way around, okay? How the fuck they have a job? I don't know. I really don't know, okay? I mean, listen. I have a good idea that could maybe, maybe start the ball in the right direction in New York City. First of all, uh, fire Charlene McRae's entire $2 million staff. One, she, what the fuck does she need a staff for? 14 people at $2 million? That's taxpayer money. Get rid of them. Fire them. Okay? Then stop funding propaganda-fueled social service organizations with city grants. Keep the fucking money in the city. Okay? And then, and then maybe... Maybe, if they ask nice. Uh, Shirley McRae, the mayor's illustrious activist wife, maybe she'll be nice enough to donate back some of that $816 million that she misplaced from a nonprofit organization to kind of help out the city a little bit. Maybe make her, her, her husband look, you know, a little bit like a fucking hero. Okay, maybe she'll be nice enough to do that. Okay. I mean, these, these people are just fucking unconscionable. It really is. It's, it, it's just beyond fucking uh, disturbing. So, um, some information was brought to my attention today. It's public information that I, I honestly had no idea about. So, my friend Christina had mentioned this to me today, and I had to, I had to share it with you guys. Uh, <clears throat> so, let me give you some info that you may not know about, old Muppet Hands. Okay? And how he's grossly unqualified to run this great city of New York. Okay, So first off, everything about him, including his name, is fucking bullshit. Okay? Okay? So first of all, his name isn't Bill de Blasio. He changed it to Bill de Blasio. He was born, wait for it, Warren Wilhelm Jr. You see, his mother's Italian. His father was German, so he I guess he decided it would be nicer to have a more Italian sounding last name, so he changed it to um, to uh, de Blasio. He went to his mother's maiden name. And then I don't know where the fuck he got Bill from out of Warren, but his, his, he was born Warren Wilhelm Jr. Now this jerk off likes to say he was born in Manhattan. He wasn't born in Manhattan. I mean, he was born in Manhattan, but he's not a New Yorker. He was born in Manhattan by way of Connecticut. His parents were in Connecticut. They drove down to Manhattan because that's where their doctor was. Had little little Warren Wilhelm and then went back up to New England. Apparently, this jerk-off grew up in Massachusetts, not far outside of Boston. So, guess what? He's a, he's a fucking Red Sox fan. Okay? You get that? The mayor in New York City is a passionate Bo Sox fan. Okay, now this is a team that the Mets and the Yankees can both agree on that they hate. All right? They've caused too many fucking problems between the Bronx and Queens. Okay? So, our mayor is a Red Sox fan. Now, on top of that, okay, uh, he eats bagels with butter, not cream cheese. Everyone knows in fucking New York, you put one thing on a bagel, cream cheese. You want to you wanna add a little something else, maybe some locks and shit like that, but cream cheese goes on a bagel, not fucking butter. Okay? He eats his pizza with a knife and fork. What kind of fucking self-respecting Italian eats, eats their pizza with a knife and fork? I mean, unless you're in Chicago, which that's a different story. You cannot pick up a slice of deep dish pizza. That's a meal in itself. That's the exception to the rule. But otherwise, you pick your fucking pizza up like a human. Like a man. Okay? 
So, and here's another one for you. Okay, here's a, here's, here's, a be- here's another butte for you. Um, in in school, in high school, um, he enjoyed student politics, and his nickname was get this, Senator Provolone. You know why? Because he stunk. That's why they called him Senator Provolone. He got his start working for the Dinkins administration, which explains why he's completely fucking clueless. Subsequently, that's where he met his wife. Um, and then they they allegedly, well, apparently they honeymooned um, in, in Cuba. Okay, This was around 1994, you know, when the U.S. travel ban was still in place. So going to Cuba at around that point in time was considered fucking treason. But... Him and Charlene worked for the Clinton administration at the time, so I guess they got the little presidential pass. They probably, you know, they probably hopped on Hillary Clinton's back and, and rode her from fucking Mexico to Havana like a goddamn water buffalo. Imagine this shit, she probably beached herself, blew some fucking water out of a blowhole, they gave her Dolce de Leche and sent her back across the fucking ocean. Son of a bitch. Okay. <clears throat> I mean, and here's my favorite. Here's my absolute favorite. Uh, de Blasio's parents were known communist supporters. Yeah, that, that apple didn't fall too far from that tree. You remember his ex-junky daughter that got arrested for, uh, during a BLM protest for throwing a brick at a cop and saying, fuck the police? Hmm. Doesn't that sound a little communist to you? I mean, it uh, does to me. I mean, this fucking asshole can't run his own house with two kids and a criminal wife. Okay, how the fuck anyone expected that he could run our city? I don't understand. I don't. I really don't know what the fuck was going through these people's heads. Okay, I really don't. If you voted for this son of a bitch, okay, if you voted for this piece of shit, I hope you lost your business, your job, your home. I hope you're... I hope you're a fucking victim of this asshole stupidity because that's what you fucking deserve, okay? That's what you deserve. That's how you learn. And right after you're all bankrupt and, and turned inside out, go fucking jump off the George Washington Bridge. You don't even deserve to jump off a New York fucking bridge. Go jump off a Jersey one, you pieces of shit, okay? I mean, between him and Shirley McRae, Forbes magazine has said they have a net worth of $2.5 million. How? They're fucking public servants. Servants. How do you accumulate two and a half million dollars in a mayor in New York City? How? Okay? You don't think that there's something going on? Come on. Give me a fucking break. So, there's your crazy train update. So, time for a little venture into the sports world. So, let's see. Uh, the Yankees won five in a row. Look at that. I guess last week's rant worked. <laughs> So they, 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 they won five in a row, so they, they, they're seeded, I think, in the eighth seed for uh, the playoffs. Um, also, Baboonier's is in the hot seat. All right, so um, apparently he has an option on his contract to be brought back for 2021. So if the Yankees decide to not exercise that option, this asshole's out the door. Bye-bye, Boone. Don't let the door hit you with a good Lord splitcher, you fuckface. Okay? Um, I mean, if he doesn't get them, at least into the World Series... He's fucked. I mean, especially in a in a sixty game season. Come on. I mean, this team should have been should have won the World Series two times over already. I mean, Girardi got them within one game, and the only reason they lost is because the Astros cheated. All right. So this fucking guy's a complete fuck up. All he does is sit there eating pumpkin seeds and looking like a fucking chimpanzee. So <clears throat> let's see what happens. Hopefully, they don't bring him back for next season. Uh, you know, if there's a god, they won't. Uh, the Islanders uh, lost last night to Tampa Bay, so there goes their Stanley Cup hopes. You know, listen, I'm not an Islander fan myself, um, but I will say this. They did they did make a valiant effort. They made a good run. So I got to tip my hat to the Islanders, especially since my team, the Rangers, just does not understand the concept of hockey. Uh, <clears throat> so, you know, sorry to see them lose. You know, but it is what it is. That's all fair and love, war, and sports, right? So on to football. So the NFL has threatened to penalize coaches with fines and suspensions for not wearing face masks and the face shields, which seem to keep fogging up as they're yelling at their team for not knowing how to play football. Um, but So they're going to find them and, and, and penalize them for that. But I guess blatant disrespect for the national anthem, our country, and the brave people who fought and died for it uh, in the name of social justice by a bunch of overpaid criminals is okay. That's fine. Okay, you, you could do that, but make sure you at least the coach at least wears a mask. Uh, okay, so last week the Saints beat the Bucks, uh, and Tom Grady got spanked. I mean, he looked like a fucking deer in the headlights. This asshole. You know what? 
Wake up and smell the fucking palm trees, Tom. Uh, I guess he's missing his Patriots. So, uh, yeah, he looked like a deer in the headlights. His coach fucking ripped him a new asshole, too, which was delightful to watch. As far as the Giants and Jets go, they should just give up now. I don't even understand why these two are football teams. Now, I'm a fucking Giants fan, and I'm telling you that. Okay, they, they're fucking horrible. I mean, horrible. The Jets lost to the fucking Buffalo Bills. Which I'll get to that in a second. And the Giants had a fucking 10-point lead and dropped it on Monday night to Pittsburgh. And granted, the Steelers are a good team. I didn't expect a hell of a matchup between Roethlisberger and, and Daniel Jones. But, I mean, they, they, they did come out of the fucking gate swinging. And then they just completely forgot how to play football at the third quarter. Yeah. And as far as the Jets go, listen, I got nothing against the Buffalo Bills. It's a New York team. But the one bone of contention that I have for them, that I hope that they have a completely fucking miserable season, okay? Um, because uh, apparently that's the football team that Governor Nostrils prefer, prefers. So I, I hope that they have an absolute miserable season. Just so that this fucking asshole doesn't have a second's, second's amount of joy. Okay, I mean, if we can't have fun, we can't be happy, neither should he. I hope that he develops like a penile drip and he has to catheter himself at least three times a day and that he, he cries from it. Okay, this fuck face. <clears throat> now, that's football. You know, so, you know, again, I, I've been a little bit busy this week, but, you know, I did get out and about and, and I've heard this mentioned a few times before. You know, the masks. Again, the masks. Now, there are certain types of... There's all different types of masks I've noticed. And there's one in particular that bothers me a lot to see. And <clears throat> that's the one that looks like a duck. Okay, you you know the one I'm talking about. This stupid looking thing. Now, some it has like two different kinds of straps. So I guess some people wear it like this, which this isn't so bad. I mean, it looks ridiculous, but it's not so bad. But it's when people wear them like this. You see that? See, that annoys the fuck out of me. I'll tell you why. You look like a giant duck. And personally, I hate ducks. And I'm going to tell you a little story. When I was a child, I had a very traumatic experience involving a duck. You see, my parents thought it would be a good idea one day to, to go from, from the city, from Brooklyn, to Eisenhower Park to have a, a picnic. Who the fuck has a picnic anymore, right? So we had a picnic. I was about, I don't know, four or five years old. And uh, somebody told me to go feed the ducks. So here I am, little five-year-old me with a piece of Wonder Bread in my hand, and I go to feed this this fucking duck with it. And this son of a bitch fucking bird, instead of taking the bread, quacks, and then bites down on my right testicle. So I learned two things that day. One, ducks are vicious creatures. And two, they have fucking sharp-ass teeth. So this fucking duck bites down on my right ball. So I did the only thing that I could figure to, figure to do. I kicked it. I mean, I gave it a good shot. This fucking bird went flying, right? Now, ducks are also highly intelligent animals. Fun fact. People don't know this. This motherfucker starts flapping its hands and quacking. Okay? And I couldn't understand what was happening. And then before I realized that I was getting outflanked from both sides, he was calling in reinforcements. About 20 fucking ducks showed up. And they chased me all the way across the fucking park. Everybody's sitting down, eating their lunch and shit. And here I come running past them. And then about a fucking army of ducks is right and running right behind me. They chased me all the way to my father's car. I had to dive into the car and lock the fucking doors. They surrounded the fucking car. My father had to go chase them away. I won't get out of the car again. And ever since that day, ever since that day, see, they must tell the legend of the one that got away. That would be me. And ever since then, every time ducks see me, they all behave the same way. They look at me, and they all start quacking. And they start approaching me. And I, I fucking run for my life. I don't fuck around. I, I'm out. I, I ain't playing. And people have witnessed this. It's not. I, I'm not just saying. They, they, they fucking follow me. They're still trying to get me. They're still trying to kill me. Okay? So, you know, people think, oh, that's funny, it's, it's the ducks. No, no. Matter of fact, I've developed a taste for these son of a bitches. Okay? <clears throat> Anytime I see duck on the menu, whether I want it or not, I fucking order it. I'll take it home if I got it. Okay? This is just so I can deplete the population. They're evil birds. Don't let your children feed ducks. Don't let them go near the fucking ducks. They're, they're evil. And when I see people walking around with this stupid thing on their face like a fucking duck, I want to punch them right in the fucking nose. Okay? Take these things and throw them out. <clears throat> Now, 
for those of you that don't know, today is actually a Jewish holiday. It's Rosh Hashanah. Where they, you know, they got to run home by sundown and not touch anything electronic. And I'm thinking to myself, you know, subsequently at the same time, everybody's wearing these masks and stuff. And and what the fuck are you going to do with them when the world eventually becomes normal again? You know? So, I came up with an idea with masks like this. Okay? And I guess in the spirit of Rosh Hashanah, this comes in handy. So, you know, there are some Jews that have to wear a yarmulke. And I always said to myself, well, I mean, they hold them in with a bobby pin. But what if you're bald? Like this. See? How do you, how the fuck do you wear these things? What do you, glue it on your head? So, <clears throat> I came up with an idea. How to repurpose your mask. And you only have to carry one thing. So, you're wearing your mask around like that here, right? Now, if you're Jewish and you're going into the temple or whatever, you take your mask off. And there you go. Look at this. It's a yarmulke with ear straps. What, what, a, what, a, what a thing to do. Look at this. What, your, your head is covered? You don't have to wear a bobby pin. What a mensch this man is. Look at this. Look what. See? I mean, come on. And, and you got another holiday next month. Uh, next week. Yom Kippur. I mean, this, look. Look. It's windproof. Okay? I mean, if it's a blustery fall day, your yarmulke doesn't fly off your head. You could, you could, <coughs> you could drive in a convertible. You could ride a roller coaster. Okay? I mean, this is, I mean, you can hang upside down. It doesn't come off. And look, it's black. It's stylish. It goes with everything. It's for the well-dressed Jew. Okay? And then when you want to, look, when you want to keep the corona away, you put it around your thing like that, and there you go. It's better than matzo ball soap. So, there you go. See, don't ever say that I don't have positive things on this show and that I don't give you guys good little life hacks. So there you go, for my Jewish friends. There you go. Two for the price of one. What a deal. Okay? <clears throat> Shalom and Mazel Tov. So I hope you enjoy your holidays. Uh, enjoy the last Friday of uh, the last weekend of the summer. And that's been your Friday wrap-up. Salud. And I'll see you when I see you.